solar physicist, I study the sun. Understanding the sun is important for understanding our place in the universe. On the day of the eclipse, August 21st, we're gonna be looking for fast dynamic motion in the solar corona, the outer atmosphere of the sun. What we're trying to study is why the solar corona is so hot. It's millions of degrees compared to only a few thousand degrees for the visible surface underneath. These planes require a lot of specialized expertise to fly and to operate the equipment. So originally this aircraft uh, was designed to be like a medium uh, bomber. It was built back in the, uh, the early 60s. Then this, this version that you see behind me, the WB-57, uh, was fitted with larger wings, larger engines, and uh, the ability to fly high. We're going to start briefing several hours prior to takeoff. We have pilots and maintenance crew here that have dealt with these planes and these cameras for years. The equipment operators are going to be the ones responsible for actually aiming the cameras and making sure that everything is captured. That's something that takes hundreds of hours uh, of training and experience. We'll step to the aircraft pre-flight and uh, do all of our final checks. They are just cleared up. I'm going to call for taxi. Copy that. I'll take around that's an IT6 taxi with Charlie. All right, here we go, dude. You ready? Yes, I am. Taxi lights on. These WB-57 aircraft will be flying at an altitude of 50,000 feet. That's almost 10 miles up in the air. And the reason we're, we're trying to fly that high is to uh, get above most of the atmosphere to get a clearer picture of the eclipse. Hands-on in the cockpit, I'm going to have those two monitors in front of me. We're going to have two satellite feeds live from both of the aircraft. And one will have visible readout from the camera and the other one will have infrared. They're going to be flying at approximately 450, 460 miles per hour. Now the moon's shadow is going to be traveling at about 1400 miles per hour. When the eclipse begins, we'll turn into the path of totality, train the cameras on the sun. So as the shadow overtakes the plane in the rear, for a brief moment, they'll both be in the shadow. That's what will allow us to stitch together the videos from both aircraft so that we can get a total of about seven and a half minutes of totality, compared to only two and a half minutes for someone on the ground. They're going to get a better view than the, than the astronauts will. Uh, yeah. Because yeah. they'll get to see the eclipse. It, it's, yeah. a, it's a unique place to sit above all the clouds, above all the weather, gently see that curve of the Earth. I wish I could go myself, but it'll be, it'll be good being with you on the ground and so, so all these guys. <laughs> we'll, we'll, make, we'll be the next best thing. We'll, we'll right. be right there with them. It's hard to say what happens once the jets touch down. Certainly, we will have data in our possession that nobody will ever have had before. Emily and Rebecca Young from Seattle, Washington, in their garage two years ago, beginning to build their own mini lightweight spacecraft. Our goal was to build a spacecraft and launch it into space, or at least as close to space as we could get. It was trial and error, even styrofoam balls in case of a water landing. And then the day arrived. There's dad, Winston. Three. Really cool to see how the Earth looked from up there. It makes us think about how small we are. Our spacecraft got up to 78,000 feet. That's two and a half times the height of Mount Everest. Their lightweight spacecraft flying high, and that's a picture of their cat, Loki. At the time, the White House was so impressed, they got an invite from President Obama. What was that like when your dad got the call? Could your family believe it? And, and what did you tell the president when you got there? <laughs> When Dad got the call, it was the day before April Fool's Day, and the call was something like, Hi, it's the White House speaking, and Dad said something like, April Fool's Day is tomorrow. <laughs> they went to the White House and showed off their invention, and this week they'll be in Glendale, Wyoming, in the path of totality, ready to launch again, and their data they're going to share with NASA. What do they want to be when they grow up? I want to be a robotic engineer. Her older sister, not sure yet, but she does have advice for other kids, other girls their age. Don't give up because even if some people tell you you can't do this or it's going to be too hard, just keep on going and persevere. And even if something goes wrong, which will happen, keep on trying. And so we choose Kimberly and Rebecca Young in the Great American Eclipse this Monday. Our coverage begins at 1 p.m. Eastern. And Rob Marciano and I and the whole team will be out there live. So, Rob, everyone wants to know tonight, how's it looking as far as cloud cover? 
Well, coast to coast, clear skies would be ideal, but as you know, that's not going to happen. Take a look at this graphic. The, the brightest white line, that's the path of totality, and basically east of the Rockies, you start to get in some moisture. So Lincoln, Jefferson City, just fair, and Charleston may have the most amount of cloud cover. That's in the red zone. I know that's where you're anchoring from, David. We have all weekend to try to improve on that forecast. I'm going to work fun. on it. I'm going to clear things up by Monday, Rob. Can't wait to see you. <laughs> 1 p.m. Eastern. On Monday, set your DVRs at home if you can't watch it with us live. I'm David Muir. Thanks for watching here this week. And as I mentioned, the Great American Eclipse, Monday at 1. Good night. Thanks and shares. I look forward to the conversations we will have as a new and larger community. So thank you very much. Now, let's take a look at this solar eclipse, which many are saying is the beginning of the end. The eclipse will come before the Great Alignment, which occurs on September 23rd of this year. This is when we will see the alignment spoken about in Revelations 12.1. Revelations 12.1 reads, And a great sign appeared in the heavens, a woman clothed in the sun with the moon under her feet and a crown of twelve stars on her head. This is the alignment of Virgo, which will be directly above the moon. According to Revelations, this is when the beginning of the end is to happen, and it describes those times as being like the birth pangs of a woman in labor. So let's take a little bit deeper look at this eclipse. On August 21st, 2017, a total solar eclipse will darken the American skies starting in Oregon and moving across the country's midsection to South Carolina. The shadow will be close to 70 miles wide and divides the country in half. Does this pretend evil for the nations according to scripture? Absolutely. In Revelation 6, which happens just prior to the day of the Lord, the Bible speaks about the sun turning as black as sackcloth. When the moon passes between the earth and the sun, you have a solar eclipse, which can occur totally or partly and obscures the image of the sun for an earth-based viewer. The last time that this happened, where the path of totality lies completely within the United States, was in 1776, the date of the founding of our republic. The starting point of the Great Eclipse is on the waterfront at Government Point, Oregon at 10.15 a.m. Pacific Daylight Time. The center line's last contact with the continental United States occurs at the Atlantic Ocean's edge just southeast of Key Bay, South Carolina. In the meantime, the eclipse impacts a total of 10 states. In the Bible, 10 represents order and completeness. This goes back in history to the ten generations that began with Adam and ended with Noah. That generation had a pretty abrupt end. You might recall the Great Flood. This great eclipse also is a time marker to the great sign of Virgo, which will be just 33 days away from the August 17th date of the eclipse. As seen from the Midwest, the planet Venus will also be at negative 33 degrees west-northwest of the Sun. 2017 may well be the culmination and convergence of diverse prophecies, including the appearance of Planet X. Paul tells us in 1 Thessalonians that the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night. People will be talking about peace and safety, but Paul makes reference to this in the same chapter and says that it will be like labor pains upon a pregnant woman. This definitely points to the September 23, 2017 Great Sign, or Great Alignment. This will represent the birth of Jupiter, the king planet, from the womb of Virgo. All of this will be accompanied by labor pains, which could be thought of as seismic activity or volcanic activity here on Earth. This could even represent social upheaval and change. Ominously, Revelation 12 is the last reference in the entire Bible to this event. This is a period of darkness. What might cause this to happen? Right now, there is a huge reawakening of volcanoes across the world. In Italy, in the Bay of Naples, right near Pompeii, which is the site of the 79 AD eruption of Mount Vesuvius, there is a supervolcano known as Campi Fiegri, which if it erupted, could kill millions. In fact, it is so large, it could have a global catastrophic impact. Scientists are in the process of drilling down two miles deep into the crust of the earth at the site to measure the magma levels beneath. Despite opposition from other scientists who believe that this is suicidal and could cause the supervolcano to erupt. Are all of these facts which are in simultaneous motion just mere chance occurrences? 
Well, let's see what Albert Einstein has to say about chance. Einstein once said, Coincidence is God's way of remaining anonymous. So what do you guys think? I'd love to hear your thoughts on this, so get in the comment section and let us know, and please don't forget to smash that like button and subscribe if you're not already subscribed. Thank you for watching, and we'll be back soon with another video.